Hey there, Kaylee here. Today, I want to talk about some fascinating biology. And if you don't already know, biology is essentially the study of life and all living organisms, including you. The truth is, there's so much that goes on inside of your body all the time, and we don't even realize it. So today's lesson is about something in your very own body. Have you ever heard of DNA? Even if not, maybe you've noticed that you have similar traits like eye, skin, or hair color as your parents. Maybe you've ever wondered why you don't exactly look like any of your friends. It all comes down to genetic code, the things that essentially make us, well, us. We each have a genome that differs from person to person. This genome is just a fancy term for the collection of DNA we have in our bodies. As for DNA, the term refers to the molecules that store our genetic information. In other words, it holds the scientific codes for different traits, like your eye color, hair color, height, blood type, shape and size of certain features, and so much more. These codes are unique to each and every one of us, which is why we all look a little different. But some of that information and those codes do come from your biological parents, which is why you might notice some similarities in appearance with your biological mom, dad, or siblings. The specific code varies depending on the combination of chromosome pairs. Human DNA comes in 23 pairs of chromosomes. These chromosomes are basically strands of DNA passed down from your biological parent. Long story short, both your biological mother and father each donate 23 chromosomes. Those 46 chromosomes pair up to give you your full set of 23 chromosomes that determine your genetic traits. With these 23 pairs of chromosomes, there are sections of DNA that contain information that determines your physical features or traits. These sections of DNA are called your genes. There are so many different combinations those chromosomes can make. That's why we're all different, even when we share certain elements of DNA. Pretty cool, right? But it turns out DNA doesn't work alone. A lot of people don't think much about DNA's partner, RNA. Despite often flying under the radar, RNA is just as important as DNA. Without RNA, those scientific codes that are really important to making you who you are would not get very far. In other words, DNA and RNA sort of work together to create the unique person that you are. Talk about a rock star duo! Both can be found in all living organisms, from humans and animals to plants and even bacteria, and they have specific jobs that they are responsible for. So let's put those curiosity caps on to learn a little bit more about the relationship between DNA and RNA and why they are so essential. First, let's chat about the visual difference between these two Biology superstars. While DNA is generally double-stranded in what is called double helix structure, RNA is generally single-stranded. See the difference? So again, DNA is the one that looks like a twisted ladder. Now you can only see these differences with the help of a microscope, of course. And DNA and RNA are found in different places of the cell as well. Most human cells are classified as eukaryotic cells, meaning they usually have a membrane surrounding nucleus where DNA lives. RNA, however, is found both inside 
and outside of the nucleus. Regardless of where they are found, both DNA and RNA are what we call nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are a type of biomolecule formed of nucleotides. These nucleotides act as building blocks for DNA and RNA. Now, each strand of DNA and RNA has three parts. They have a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. When it comes to the specifics of each part of the DNA or RNA strand, there are some differences. The sugar in DNA is called deoxyribose. As for the sugar in RNA, it's called ribose. Here's a trick to help you remember which is which. We know it as DNA, but the technical and the complete scientific term is deoxyribose nucleic acid. In other words, DNA. Any guesses on what the long form term for RNA is? If you guess ribose nucleic acid, you, my friend, are correct. Not only do they have different sugars, but DNA and RNA have different nitrogenous bases too. The bases found in DNA are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine and thymine act as partners, as to guanine and cytosine. So each base is part of a base pair. If you have four bases, you have two base pairs. But what if you had, for example, 10 bases? How many pairs would you have? Five. People usually use silly phrases called mnemonic devices, an acronym or a silly phrase to help them remember which bases partner together. I like to use apple tree for adenine and thymine and chips and guac for cytosine and guanine, but that's just me. You can use whatever mnemonic device works to help you remember those DNA base pairs. So have some fun creating your own, or you can borrow mine. I don't mind. Now when it comes to RNA, the bases are slightly different. The RNA bases are adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. Can you spot which of the RNA bases is different than the bases of DNA? If you said uracil, give yourself a pat on the back. So those are some of the structural differences between DNA and RNA. But like I said earlier, regardless of these differences, DNA and RNA work together. While DNA is responsible for creating our genetic codes, RNA is a big help. But to better understand how RNA helps DNA, we need to look at the different types of RNA. There are several different types of RNA, each with its own important duty. Today, we're gonna to focus on protein synthesis RNA. These are the types of RNA that play a role in creating the necessary proteins for your body. There are three very important types of protein synthesis RNA, and these types of RNA are considered to be the most popular RNA. They tend to be studied more than the others because of their important functions. So let's dive into these three types of RNA. There's messenger RNA or mRNA, which helps deliver a message to the different cells in your body. And it's not just any old message, it's really important DNA coding. Now, mRNA is really important in eukaryotic cells because when DNA creates the genetic information, it never leaves the nucleus. That's where the messenger RNA comes in handy. mRNA can leave the nucleus and that's exactly what it does. Picture a letter going to the post office. The mRNA acts as the mailman delivering that letter to its recipient. In this case, a ribosome. Ribosomes are really important because they help make proteins. These proteins are essential in the proper functioning of cells and the human body. In other words, we need them to survive. 
So yeah, they're kind of a big deal. Then there are two types of non-coding RNAs: transfer RNA or tRNA and ribosomal RNA or rRNA. While these types of RNA don't carry code like mRNA, they do play an important role in the building of proteins in your cells. And we know just how important those are. Our RNA combines with protein in a cell cytoplasm to create ribosomes in the first place. Our RNA makes up a big part of a ribosome, which is probably how it got the name ribosomal RNA in the first place. tRNA is responsible for carrying specific amino acids to the polypeptide chain of a ribosome. That's why it got the name transfer RNA in the first place. This transfer helps in the protein building process. How does it know which amino acid to place where? Why? From the messenger from the mRNA, of course. Once that correct amino acid is in place, they create something called a polypeptide chain. Those chains make up important proteins. So, as you can see, it's all pretty intertwined. DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, it's all tied together. Remember, we need proteins to essentially survive. I mean, different proteins have different roles that help our bodies function properly. They help you grow and stay healthy. They help produce energy and hormones. They play a role in the immune system, just to name a few. Oh, and like we were talking about earlier, they help pass on genetic information from parents to children. So without ribosomes and the proteins they produce, cells wouldn't be able to carry out their many important functions. I could go on and on and on about the cells that make up not just the human body, but living organisms in general. There's so much more to DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, and the many cells that make up your body. This is just a tiny glimpse into all the hard work that's going on inside of your body. Pretty cool, right? But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Biology is truly fascinating. So go out there and keep exploring and keep learning about what's going on inside your own body that you don't even realize. For now, thanks for tuning in, my friend. As always, stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24-7. We're so excited to bring round-the-clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.